my deal was my doubt was with Sark, right? Because I yeah. look at Sark's resume and I don't actually see anything that good, right? And so I yeah. convinced myself that Sark would never be the one to do it. And you know what else, Aaron? Like we're gonna get into it. The the the, the line play was incredible. The, the the I mean Quinn Ewer's ability to throw the deep ball yeah, gives me goosebumps. Um but Steve Sark which was also, which is something he which, didn't do well all last year no, or even all last first year. rice. Like you look at rice he's over six. He was yeah. over six of balls over twenty yards versus Rice. I mean, that was my only thing. I remember I told you last week after that game, I was like, I thought Quinn played really well versus Rice. He needed to improve on his deep ball accuracy. Mm -hmm. He needed to get the ball out a little bit earlier. Um, but I have never seen a quarterback throw with better anticipation, mm. whether it's a bubble screen, a five yard out, a ten yard stop route, a post ball go ball. Quinn gets rid of it. Yeah, sometimes a little beautiful. bit too early because, like you know, I'm like man, the, the, that receiver is nowhere near ready to catch a football. But he throws with incredible anticipation, and he he improved in a week, which is hard to do on the one thing that he did not do well in week one, which is the deep ball, and he was terrific. So that is all. Also to say that Sarkeesian called the hell of a game plan. Yes. Right. Like when you're thinking about yep. Steve Sarkeesian, the one thing that was never really doubted was his ability to call the <laughs> offense. And that was, I mean, he just felt like, it felt like Alabama was just reeling the entire night. Like they were mm -hmm. on their back heel. Um, uh, so uh, Texas tattoo, you let your emotions about Texas take over. It's all good to Bobby band up and on. I did. Okay. And, and to be fair, yes, like I said, I let ego get into play a bit there where you want to be right so badly that as Obla points out, you end up cheering for Alabama on tape. Mm. Which, but also to be clear, like, fuck out there. I mean, else she's two and two against him recently. I don't, I, don't, I don't care about them anymore. They're whatever. Um, all right, let's get into the game itself then. Uh, we both said it, Aaron, off the bat before the show. We started talking to each other and, and Saturday, which was the wildest part about this match. I mean, there's a ton of good to break down. But without a doubt, the wildest part was the extent to which Texas beat Alabama's ass on both sides mm -hmm. of the lines. Yep. Alabama's uh, offensive line was terrified of that Texas front. I mean, the center, and, and I know because I've been there, the center had two illegal snaps, two double yeah. club sets. How many How many balls did you see him roll back there to Jalen uh, Miller? The, we did the only, week one too. He did it week one too. He was doing that crap. Uh, and, and so it doesn't help though when you have a nose guard that you're terrified of getting beat yeah. by. The big guy off the end, who's the big white boy freshman? Ethan Burke off the end. I mean, five yeah. sacks. For uh, how many five sacks, nine TFLs for Texas yep. defensive front, zero sacks, two TFLs for Alabama. So Texas dictated the pace from the jump and maintained the mm -hmm. entire game in the trenches. No, and that was they looked. Yes, they're big, they're gigantic, but they look slow and they look soft mm -hmm. for for yeah, a team do. that wanted to impose their will. And, and and go back to the Alabama style of football from when Nick Saban took over. Yeah, just because you're big doesn't mean you're just going to dominate. Like those guys were lethargic. They were slow off the line. It's not like they were playing in Austin either. Like you're at home, so it's it's quiet. Like you 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 get to use quarterback cadence. He can mix it up. Advantage offensive line in that situation. Plus, let's not also forget T. Bob. You've probably the most athletic quarterback in college football. And we'll get to Jalen Milrow about his game. But when a defense is going to play Jalen Miller, what's in the back of their mind? Rush lanes, not always feeling like you have to get after the quarterback because we don't want to, you know, essentially have a bust and let him run around, which he did every now and then. But you're not always going to get a hundred and hundred percent from a defensive line getting after the quarterback sure. because of the hesitation of who the quarterback is. And yet, and yet you still got dominated over and over again in the run game. They only averaged 3.1 yards per carry. Per carry. And that's with Jalen running all over the place. So, yeah, man, I think that was, to me, teams in the SEC and in and, and, and the media were thinking, oh, my goodness, Alabama's back to, to this dominating side of football. And then we watched the game, and I don't think it can just be corrected either. Like, yeah, let's give Texas credit. Like, that defensive line for Texas is going to be an absolute nightmare the entire year. Yeah. But Alabama's offense line is not elite. Third year in a row, too. They're not elite. Third they're not year gonna, in a they're row. They're not elite. That's what's wild, because Bryce Young made up for it the last two years. But that's now yes. three years in a row where you've had an Alabama team that has uh, just full of four and five stars. Like, everybody, yep. if you go 
think their high school recruiting would have been probably like first or second in their position. And for whatever reason, they're getting to Tuscaloosa and they just are not developed. Mm -hmm. Okay, real quick here on Bama, I want to say again, Aaron, one thing you were a thousand percent correct about was Jalen Milrow turning the ball over, right? I mean, inexcusable turnovers, really bad picks, not seeing the bad field. Picks. I thought that he would not have won the job or the question was like, okay, he won the job, right? And Saban's never going to give the job to a guy who does that unless the other guys are that bad, right? So I'm yeah. actually shocked at just how poor that position group as a whole has been mismanaged at Alabama that you don't have a better thrower than Jalen Milrow in this crew, somebody who can kind of read the defense better. It's 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 really down there at Alabama right now. But and, and you can add on to that, but I do want to get back to Texas because I don't want to make this about Alabama. This yeah, is more no, about no. Texas to me. I, I, I think that's 100% correct. Like this is all about Texas being – a legitimate national contender, but but yeah. we will obviously talk about Alabama because it's Alabama Nick Saban, and it, and it was just it's still shocking to me to see them play in that fashion, to lose the line of scrimmage and to have still a bunch of quarterback issues. And I, I think this is less to do with Jalen was such a, a clear cut winner, and I think it's more of a concern of like the other two guys just I guess aren't very good. Like from from hearing Ty Simpson was now the number three quarterback on that roster, and some of the rumors being he just hasn't you know, shown the coaching staff that he's able to handle the entire playbook. Um, you just don't get rid of a turnover issue in three months. And I say three months and not even dating back to last year because in the spring game, he was turning the ball over as well. Yeah. And you don't just cure that over the summer and fall. Like it just doesn't happen overnight. And, and, and Jalen just doesn't see the field. Well, that first interception it's cover three backside safety road dates down to the middle of the field low front side safety goes to the high i mean it, it, everything to me is screaming cover three it's clear as day and there's a flat defender sitting right there as he should be in a cover three situation and you throw it right at him yeah right at him yeah and i'm just like oh what are we doing it's like day um, one type and, and stuff. i will defend him i will defend him i, mean, I think the first thing i told you when we got on pre-show i was like yeah jalen was bad and he missed some easy throws and he had some some turnovers but it still goes down to that offensive line. More times than not, Jalen had dudes at his feet. He was having to run around. And sometimes it was his fault. Sometimes the offensive line fault. Like he was looking for the big play a lot throughout the ball game. Mm -hmm. He was trying to create home run after home run where there was multiple times where he could have hit his first, you know, his third step, taking a hitch, taking a five, six yeah. yard gain and just moved the chains. So he has to get better there too. But his offense line didn't him no favors either. It was a, it was a, it was, I'm not. I think a lot of people after the game were blaming Jalen. He deserves some of it, but as an offense, a whole man, it's just not a really dynamic offense at the moment. Uh, no, it's not. And and okay, so we we're, we're in agreement that there are problems about Alabama that need to be. I you know we gotta we gotta analyze it further, right? But we'll yep. do that later in the week. Right now, let's get back to Texas because there are three things out of this game that blew me away. Like we said, the first. The controlling of the line. The yep. second, uh, the mental toughness in terms of game flow, what I saw out of Texas, and I'll explain what I mean there. And then the third is Quinn Ewers. I'll, we'll get to Quinn. I think save the best for last. But yep. that's the other crazy thing about me. It wasn't just winning line of scrimmage, Aaron, but they out-toughed Alabama. Like, mm. Alabama came out hitting. They were trying to lay that wood and let Texas know, and Texas hit right back. And, and, and credit Texas because in the past, we have seen them, and Joey McGuire said it after Tech Tech won last year, right? I told you they were going to break. You push, 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 push. I told you they were going to break, right? Well, I kept expecting them to break, and they showed a ton of mental and physical toughness, right? They don't uh, – the go look back at that third quarter because it's kind of easy to forget given the final score. They don't score in that third quarter. They end up giving up 10 unanswered. Like, there is a massive touchdown pass to Jermaine Burton to take a 16-13 lead at the end of that game. And I thought for sure at that point, this was going to fall. What did they do? They come back. They play 75 yards. They can that. Point conversion number three. Like another moon ball for a touchdown. So Texas did an excellent job of quickly responding to every haymaker that Bama landed. Mm -hmm. And that impressed me. I didn't think they were possible. I didn't think they were no. capable of that. No, I, I didn't either. Um, Quinn Ewers, I, I don't know if you want to. I, yeah, I, go it, I, it, comes to, it, comes to, it comes down to him. 
And we've talked about this a little bit in, in, in last week with Colorado, and, and I think we're going to talk about Colorado a little bit more in depth during the show. But when you have a a a, a mature quarterback, and Quinn obviously has shown he has matured from last year to this year. Um, and and I think that was my biggest confidence in the season. Like I saw enough good things from Quinn Ewers last year to say, okay, I, I see the foundation's been laid. He's going to be in his second year with Steve Sarkeesian, who you look at his track record and some of the stuff he's done with quarterbacks. I have confidence that he's going to be a better quarterback heading into the season. You look at the weapons around him. The receivers are some of the best receivers in the country uh, as a unit and an experienced offensive right line. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then an experienced offensive line who, you know, was a little bit soft first rice, but still is an experienced unit. And I'm just like, man, I, I, I think this kid has a chance to be pretty special. Uh, he obviously he needs that big signature win to kind of elevate his confidence a little bit and get the fan, the fan base on his uh, on his side, especially when you add uh, a Manning onto that 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 roster. But when you have a quarterback that can play at that level, mm -hmm. that can also take care of the football too. Something that we talked about with with with, with Sanders as well at Colorado, he plays a mature style of football, takes care of it, throws guys open. Uh, doesn't force ball down the field when it's not there. All those little things that are, you know, th that are easier said than done from the quarterback position. Quinn Ewers has demonstrated that for the first two weeks of the season that he can handle the pressures of going into Tuscaloosa in a big time road environment and be methodical with his game plan, be methodical with his progress of going from one to two to three, trusting his receivers, trusting his game plan, throwing the ball on time accurately uh, at all three levels. To me, that gives me more confidence than anything else. And I put a tweet out yesterday that in today's game, we've always talked about defense wins championships. If you have a quarterback like Quinn Ewers and receivers like that, that will win you championships. Yeah. And obviously yeah. it helps to have a defense like Texas. But I think of LSU in 19. I think of Alabama in 20. It took a you took an offensive performance from Georgia last year versus Ohio State. You know, where A.D. Mitchell's making plays and Bowers is making plays and Stetson's playing great football. Like, you need that type of offense. You can't win championships scoring in the low 20s. You no. have to win championships scoring in the 40s. And that takes really good quarterback play, really good receiver play, or in Georgia's standpoint, elite tight end play over the past couple seasons.